I want to speak about a topic, the power of love. Amen. So when I came here, someone was talking about power and love, love, and I was just sitting that quiet. Because of the time, I will just only talk about the definition. See, there isn't much time for us, and everything that has gone on today is very, very important. So I will just speak a little bit about the definition, and if the time comes when my boss gives me opportunity again, I will talk about it. God bless you. God bless you. Apostle. Shall we just stretch our hands and say, God bless you. God bless you. He's a very good man. He's really, really, he is a lifter. He lifts people. See, when I came to see him, the first day I saw him, I said, there is something in this man I need to tell. And he has been a blessing to me. And if you all also bear witness with me that this man is a good man. Yes. See, in this world, you don't see good men. Yeah. People who are bad are too many. <laughs> the power of love. Yeah. The definition of love is very, very, very complex in the scripture. But the Holy Ghost gave a, a whole chapter and spoke about love. Now, there are basically four types of love. We have what we call storage. That is how, how to do it. Then we also have what we call um, eros, or also erotic. That one is very deep. <laughs> then we also have the filio. The last one is agape. So we have what? Storage. Some will say storage. The first one, the story is the love that we have for our family. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that you don't love your children. You love them. So you just have that to because they are, they are your family members. That's called storage. Then we have what called the eros or the erotic love. <coughs> the eros, E-R-O-S. The first one is Torch, S-T-O-R-G-E. The erotic has to do with the, uh, the love you have for your wife or your husband. And now they are telling us that a human being can marry the, you know, the same sex kind of, so that has all been integrated in it. So whatever opposites or whatever thing you have because of that kind of relationship is called eros or erotic love. Then we have what we call filio. Now the filio is friendship, say a friend. That you can be so close, you know in the Bible, between David and, and what, what is the guy's name? Jonathan. So they need their, their soul. They were so close. So the Bible says there is a friend that's ticket. Closer than my brother. That love is there. But Jonathan and David's love was turning to even higher one. Because David was a poor boy, he didn't have anything. This man was a prince and just loved him. But you know, you see, he loved him because of what? He killed Goliath. And that, that was the day that he fell in love with David. And then the, the relationship grew. So, at the end of the three, for any of these, the love can grow. But there is one of them, hallelujah, that has nothing to offer. It hasn't got any condition. Yes. That one will not let you go. It doesn't matter anything you have done to that love. That love is called agape. Yes. So the Bible tells me that for God so loved the world, would you have time to meditate on that particular scripture? You will understand that God loves sinners. He loved the world. The Bible says, at the time that we are, we, we are so weak, God or his son is son to die for the ungodly. He didn't die for people who were good. He died for us. Look at the only man, 
the, the man on the cross there. Two of them, if you read the Bible carefully, first, they spoke against Jesus. They all, the two of them, because that's what Mark, Mark said that, Mark and Luke said that. Then the other gospel, I think Matthew and John, reported that, then later that, the other one saw that he knew to do, put the thing in uh, the right perspective. Then he said, he came back to his senses and they started condemning the other murderer until he said, when you come to your kingdom, remember me. Yeah. Then he said, today you will serve me with me in paradise. Yeah. On the cross he said, Father, forgive them all. They don't know what they are doing. That's the love I want to talk about today. This, this love is the highest. Who won't love someone who will give them a car? If you give me a car, I will love you. <laughs> so I like him, why? He said, he give me a car. <laughs> That's what anybody can do. It's just like thanking God. Anybody will come here and thank God if something good has happened. Yes. If things are not going on well, and you can come here boldly and say, I thank you, Lord, for my life. Hallelujah. Yes. That one. Amen. The first thing anybody can get, even the unbelievers, the, 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 the wicked men, they do well, they, they, also, they also love some people. Yeah. There's nobody in this world who hasn't got love in them. Mm -hmm. They have got love or they love some people. Mm -hmm. Even have robbers, they have, you know, they have group. They, have, they, have, they love themselves. I'm robbers. <laughs> they have got love. <laughs> but the fourth one, and the surprise is that those of us in the, in the kingdom, of light, who have this? We are the one that have got troubles. All troubles are in church. Amen. All troubles. Marriages. You can't attribute him with God. He is so wise. Everything he says in scripture. If you think that this one, oh, you can get no. Before you even think, you know already. So what is agape love? What is it? Now, before I give the definition, let me say certain things the Bible says. The best definition is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 1 to 13. That's the best definition and all the properties Thank God, most of you are writing. I'm only today defining love. Next time I'll come, I'll talk about loving ourselves and loving God. And then, what is love? What is love? That's what happens. Now, before I define it, he said, though I have the tongues of men and of angels, he said, if I don't have love, I am become, please, my English is King James. So don't mind my grammar. Because in King James, said, I am become. I am, said, I am become a sanding brass or a tingling silver. You know sanding brass, that's it. Only noise. Then he said, and though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and understand all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and I do not have love, he said, I have become this one really hit me. He said, I am become. I said, I am a useless nobody. The useless alone is not. It's not even uh, a good. Then he said, I am a useless nobody. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So you can have prophetic anointing. You can have faith to 
we move mountains. There are two types of faith. There is a faith that we have with God and we trust in Him. That's not the one. The other one, the gift of faith that we operate. He said, if you can move mountains, can you, you understand it, that many people will go to hell because they can operate in faith and control things to come from heaven down and bring healing. And even tell you, you know, you go to Ghana, there are these prophets, they will tell you that, that, that one of them said, uh, somebody, excuse me, said, said your pants is blue. Then the woman said, my pants is, is not blue. He said, it's blue. Then they, I said, what has the Holy Ghost got to do with somebody's underwear? <laughs> <laughs> They will tell you, they will mention your mommy's name. You know, before you even tell you the problem, it's mentioning names. <laughs> and then, the whole Sunday, Sunday service, no preaching about Jesus. Paul says, he said, we don't preach ourselves. Then he says, we preach Christ, hallelujah. Amen. I have not come here to preach messages. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, uh, Muslims, they have a message to preach. We don't preach messages. We preach a person. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Hallelujah. His love we are talking about. Then he said, if I can give all I have to the poor, and I can give my money to be burned, I said, why would somebody give their money to be burned? Then I understood it. You know, back in my country, that's a place where I come from called Kumasi. Then this British priest said somebody should, should, should sacrifice himself to save, uh, you know, the over here, we, they will say uh, county. There we say uh, metropolitan or something. So there's this man who went there and then they cut his head. He gave himself, you know, he laughed. Then he said, ah. Then what about it? this charity thing people do? Do you know what they do? I was reading, I went to the website, I was reading why people do a lot of charities in these places or, or parts of the world. One, in this country, if you do charity, charitable things, I'm not talking about this church, no. The, your tax goes down. So there is a reason. And two, sometimes they do that as um, a show off. Just to get a name, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. That is not what I'm always talking about. No. So the love we have, or we are talking about today, has nothing to do with giving somebody food. That what anyone, anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Now I am not saying that if you don't have that love, you don't have to do. Yes. You should have it first, have the mind of God before you do it. Do you understand it? Yes. Yes. Husbands and wives. We don't live because you, you don't you, you don't love the person because of the person's beauty or the money the person gives you. If those things go away, then you don't have any love. But when this love is operating within you, no matter what the person has done or said, you know that you love them because of what? Jesus. Amen. So your love is only based on one person. Amen. If I give a moment to my body to be burned. They said, if I don't have that love, he said, he said, it will not profit me anything. Mm -hmm. Then he began to define love. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, I don't want them to open the Bible because of the time, so I'll just speak them. Then he said, love is kind. Yeah. That's what he said. Sorry, first he said, love is patient. Sorry. Yeah. First he said, love is patient. Yeah. Then he said, and it's kind. Mm -hmm. So he said. Then he said, Love envy is not. There's no envy in love. It does not envy. He said, Love vaunted not itself. The Lord vaunted me somebody who speaks about himself boastfully. You know, so after this preaching, when you open the, the, the YouTube and you are listening to messages, you will know those who belong to Jesus. Amen. Amen. For their words. Yes. 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 They don't say boastfully. They say, love does not pass path out. Path out means someone who is proud. 
No, me, 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 me. The one man, the one, one man who was talking about five minutes, said, I, I said, I'm counting me. Me, me, one, me, two, me, three. He said, it does not behave itself unseemly. That means that it does not say bad words. The certain thing we don't say them. Even if you're wife, the certain thing you don't say them. He said, his love is not selfish. He said, the love is not easily provoked. There are some people who are too sensitive. More than magnet. I feel smart to the angry. Angry. I'm me, me. I am very, very angry. Go on. My heart. Ah. Me, don't cross me home. They don't cross you. Something make I will cross you, you will see. Me, people don't cross me. Very, 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 very angry. Calm down. It's a laugh. Then he said, love think of no evil. This one is the biggest. Doesn't think evil. That means that it, it doesn't keep records of sins. You know, when we are many months at time tempted to, to record the evil things more than the, the good things. We are human, that's what happens. That chapter last night, when you said as we come. I kept on reading. I was going to preach, being filled with the Spirit. The Holy Ghost said, I, I was not coming to preach, but I don't know, I told you. Then he said, when you go, talk about love. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. And I, it, it, it's true, when I came here, all the things we're saying here about love. Mm-hmm. He said, they don't be filled. He said, talk to them. Tell them about love. <laughs> love doesn't think evil. Evil people. Then he said, Love fails not. You know, Jesus told Peter, I said, I have prayed for you so that your first faith doesn't fail. Let me tell you one thing faith is grounded where love is not there. When your faith, if you have anything against anybody, your faith won't work. That is why we, when we say in the name of Jesus, most of the times, nothing happens. If you have anything against anybody, you will fake because in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it said, faith works in love. Amen. Amen. So the only virtue that is the greatest in the kingdom is love. Amen. It is beyond faith. Hallelujah. Because he says somewhere in chapter 8, I think 8 or 9, in first Corinthians 13, 8 or 9, he says, he said, love bears all things, believes all things. That means if you have love, automatically you are a man of faith. Yes. Love hopes all things. Then he said, love endures all things in all circumstances. That's what Paul said. He said, I know when to be abased and when to be assaulted. I know when, when, when I am in need and when I don't have need. I know when there is no money. And you know when there's money. I know when to, to, to laugh. Say, so I can do all things through Christ who standing me. That's where that condition came. We quote, we quote it anyhow. What he was saying is that whatever condition he can endure, because the man has got love in him. Yes, yes, yes. He said there are three things, three virtues. He said, faith, hope, love. He said these three things. But the greatest is love. Hallelujah. What is it? It is a measure of your worth, mm. a measure of your value. Mm. It is the greatest character of God. Mm. It is, it is, it is, it is that that virtue that connects us to the divinity. Exactly. Because it said, He that has love. Okay? He that dwells in love dwells in God. For God is love. Yeah. God is love is God. God is love. And, and I want to tell you that love is a spirit. Yes. Amen. And that spirit is the Holy Ghost in us. Amen. 
No condition. I should love you unconditionally. Don't have any grown money one. You will see that definitely your life will go on. If you God comes, you will come out. Because it's a love doesn't fail. It is a failure proof virtue. Hallelujah. Come on. Faith can fail. Mm. Mm. Love cannot fail. Mm. I can pay, I am talking about. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, we give you praise. Yes, it's a lifestyle of God. Yes, yes. It's a greatest virtue. Mm. It is a little more test. For the real and all true believer, the late more test yes. that will test you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, He said, the love of most will was cold. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one example and then finish. You know in the Bible, in John, in John chapter 21, when Jesus was he came to, he came to the disciples, and then you all, you all understand the scripture. Then after they have eaten, he asked Peter certain questions. Mm -hmm. He asked said, Peter, do you love me? Now, Jesus was using agape. He said, Peter, do you agape me? Peter said, I feel you. Then he said, feed my lamb. Mm -hmm. He asked him again, Peter, do you agape me? He said, you know that I feel you because he couldn't what, do the agape. When he said, I will die with you, he couldn't die with you. Hallelujah. 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 Then the third one, Jesus saw that the man couldn't take it. Then the third one, Jesus said, Peter, do you feel you me? He said, uh, 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 Lord, you know. So I am surprised you're asking me this question. Mm -hmm. You know that I feel you, I feel you. you. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. He couldn't die with you. The Bible says in write this one now, Psalms of Solomon chapter 8, verse 6. He said, Love is as strong as death. Love. Then verse 7, he said, Many waters cannot quench it. Yeah. Then he said, Floods cannot drown it. Yeah. He said, If a man will give all the possession of his house for love, he said, It will mean nothing. You cannot buy it because if you can buy God, you can buy love. Because God Himself is that thing. Hallelujah. The last question I want to ask you do we all have the love? The answer is emphatically yes. Why? Let's go. This one we will read. If I don't, we don't read, it's this one. Speaking from read Romans chapter 5. Quickly. Quick, quick. Thank you, Jesus. I can say yes, then say them. I don't want to. Romans. That one, alien person. Romans chapter 5. Oh, give me praise. 5 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Now hope does not disappoint. Mm -hmm. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. Do you understand it? Ah, my hand is said abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So everybody here who is a believer, because if you don't have the love of God in you, you are not a Christian. You are dead. He said, he who does not have uh, love is dead. The only law, the only law God has given us in the old New Testament is love. Amen. Because he said, if you walk in love, you have fulfilled all the commandments of God. Yes. In Romans chapter 13, yes. verse 8 and 10. Mm. He said, all the laws, don't, don't kill, don't do this, don't do this, they are all amalgamated in love. So when Jesus got killed, the greatest thing he gave us it's the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost came in us, meaning that we have got love in us. Yeah, now, it will not work just because it is there. Have you seen car, parked cars? They are all called cars. Those cars parked at the road size. Some of them have never moved three years ago. They are there. there. They are called what? Cars. But there are certain cars who moves. Huh. 
So you you can have the love, or you can live in love, but not working in it. Amen. That means that you can be saying, say, I love you, but you're not operating because love has to do with what works. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave. Mm. If you love me, show it. If you love God, show it. Yes. And I thank God that I can see the love of God in this church. Amen. Hello? Amen. And the time to tell which will bring people. Come on. Amen. Yes. You go to Jeremy one post. You know, you want to sit there. Problems. Wives and husbands are knocking their heads. I don't like you. I said, don't ever say that thing anymore. I don't like you. He said, oh, I didn't say I hate. I said, I said, okay. Don't dislike and hate. They are all cases. <laughs> so I don't, I, 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 it's not that I'm not. I said, don't say anything. <laughs> because you see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, the love of God constrains us. Yeah. That means I want to do it. I want to say something, something bad. But there's something that means pulling me down. Amen. That is the love of God. Amen. Amen. That would push you here and come to church is called the love of God. Amen. Amen. That would you can love anybody without any condition. If you are reached that level, you are growing in Christianity. It's not about uh, it's not about laying hands on people and bring healing. That one is anointing upon yourself. We are talking about one inside here coming out. Yes. Love me, show it. Hallelujah. Three things virtues. Faith, hope, love, and the greatest is love. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When I come on this time, Amen. I want you to explain. Just today, I just give the definition. God is good. All the time. All the time. Can you please our feet in the name of Jesus? Thank you, Lord. We give all the praise and honor, Holy Ghost. We love you.